right, we finally got the Raptor back in the shop today. We're going to do an upgrade that I have been wanting to do for a while, almost ever since I got the truck. One of the things that has drove me nuts about this truck is the steering wheel. It is just your ye old bland F-150 steering wheel. Um, it does obviously, you know, it is a Raptor, so it does have the color mark right here. But other than that, it's just your typical steering wheel for a 09 through 14 F-150. So uh, we are going to change that today. Um, I found a kit that basically allows me to swap the Gen 2 steering wheel from a 2017 through 2021 or 20 Raptor into this, uh, including the paddle shifters, and they are functional. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, it should update the interior a little bit more. Um, installation is pretty straightforward. You do have to take apart some of the switch panels to um, add some new circuit boards in there. But other than that, um, you have to take apart part of the center console and uh, unplug a couple of the connectors and um, then repin one of the connectors on the clock spring. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So um, I'm excited and hopefully the installation goes pretty smooth, but I, I did look around and try and find a video on how to do this. I found a couple videos on how to do like the pinning and stuff like that, but nothing on how to do the actual steering wheel. So obviously it's straightforward, but I'm going to make a video on how to put a Gen 2 steering wheel on a Gen 1 Raptor. So I'll, uh, I'll link all the parts in the description to do this and we can get this interior updated. All right, well here is the group of parts needed to complete this job. We have the 2017 through 20 Raptor steering wheel. Now this does unfortunately come with the wrong set of switch packs to do this. So you do have to go out and purchase different switch packs, which honestly aren't super expensive. Um, these circuit boards are part of the actual kit to do this, as well as this wiring. This wiring is what is going to um, plug into the shifter connectors so that we can get the paddle shifters to work that are included uh, with this steering wheel. The other nice thing about this steering wheel is if you've ever driven a 2009 through 2014 F-150, the steering wheel is pretty hard. It's not comfortable at all. There really isn't much padding to it, and it is a absolute icicle in the winter. So. Um, this kit unfortunately does not allow you to utilize the heated steering wheel button. Like I said, you do have to switch this uh, switch pack to this one, which does not have one. With that being said, the wires are still right here. So I'm actually going to try and get this to work just in a different way. So I just rigged up a simple test right here to see if we just simply put 12 volts to the connector for the heated steering wheel without plugging it into the switch panel or the clock spring if it would work and heat up so in other words if there's a way that i would be able to actually wire this up obviously i'm going to have to figure something out to be able to still turn the steering wheel left and right uh, and the wire not get caught up but if there's a way that i could even just wire it up so that when i remote start the truck it's obviously plugged in when I'm not driving. And then as soon as I, you know, start driving and need a turn, um, I can just unplug it. So, but with 12 volts on, this does absolutely work. Um, the steering wheel is nice and warm right now. And I am going to come up with a way to actually utilize the heated steering wheel function. So we have the 2017 through 2020 steering wheel from Ford. We have a 2015 through 2020 uh, airbag, which this was actually purchased at the dealership as well. Um, obviously not the cheapest part in the world. However, it is cheaper to just buy it at your local dealership because shipping is outrageous on these if you try and buy it from like a wholesale website or something like that. Um, same thing here. This is a clock spring from Ford uh, for the uh, newer generation, uh, 2015 through 20. And then these are the switch packs from just a different model Ford, but these are from Ford as well. So all of this stuff is actually from Ford, uh, except the 
circuit boards and the harness that is needed. All right, so first things first, we are going to prep the steering wheel. So I did get this trim off, or loose, I should say. It's actually pretty simple. There's just these little, if you can see right there, there's those little tabs that go into those holes. Um, it's no snapping or anything like that. Um, the way that I did it was I got my fingers up here, pulled, got this side kind of loose, worked the top, and then just kind of worked my way around and then did the same to the other side. So we'll go ahead and get the original harness that was in the steering wheel that came with it because it did come assembled like this. So we'll unplug it from all of the buttons and everything. We'll get the buttons out so that we can swap in the other buttons. I'm not actually going to bore you with watching me unplug all of these, but basically we need to unplug it from right there, which is the paddle shifter for the left side or the down paddle shifter. We need to unplug the up or right side paddle shifter, which is this gray plug right here. We need to unplug both this green connector and this red connector. Actually, there is nothing with the red connector. And then under here, um, there are the plugs for the actual switch packs themselves. So there is one on this side and this side. And then once that is done, this should be free. Once you have all of those connectors off, this will completely come off. So I'm going to leave that harness on there for now, and we are going to move on to actually swapping these switch panels out because we do have to open those switch panels up and put in the new circuit boards. So once we're moving on to replacing these switch panels, um, they do come out pretty simple, but they do have some pretty small hardware. So they are held in by four. Uh, these are T8 Torx bits. So one, two, three, and four and it is the same on the other side, one, two, three, and four, and that will actually release the switch pack from this. Once we get those out, those can be set aside and we can move on to these. Um, these are the new switch packs that need to go in here, but we do need to open them up and put the new circuit boards in. So uh, these are just little uh, number one Phillips screws. So one, two, and three and this back plate should come off and we can swap out the circuit boards that came with the kit. All right, so once you have all of those screws out of the mounting holes, you can just go ahead and lift the switch pack out. You can go ahead and do both sides because there is a pretty easy way to tell the difference between the ones that you are going to be using and the ones that you are not going to be using. So this is the one that came with the steering wheel. As you can tell, it does not have the adaptive cruise buttons on it. It just has resume and cancel the set on and off down here. So that one can get set aside. The one that we are going to be using for the left side of the steering wheel or the cruise control section is this guy. So we are replacing it with the switch pack from the adaptive cruise models. I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, that is what this kit and these circuit boards are meant to work with. So you can tell that this is the switch pack that we do need to use because it does have the adaptive cruise buttons here and here. So this would normally be, uh, you know, closer to the vehicle, further away from the vehicle. Obviously, this is not going to work or function on the 2009 through 14 F-150 due to it not actually having adaptive cruise. So uh, these buttons right here are still going to work. So both these for set or speed up and slow down, resume cancel on and off, and then your D-pad for here. So that is the left switch pack. The right switch pack that does come on the steering wheel, the one that we are not going to be using is the one with the um, voice feature that is in the center right here or that actually has the heated steering wheel button. So we are not going to be using that one. The one that we are going to be using is this guy right here. So it has the mode button in the middle, volume up, down, track left, right. Then it has a mute button right here, which unfortunately is not going to work. Here is the voice button on this one right here. And then the uh, phone feature of uh, answer and hang up and if I did watch the video correctly only one of these actually functions because the factory steering wheel on the Raptor only has one button for the phone. 
and there is the right switch pack out. So we are going to set both of the switch packs that did come with the steering wheel aside. So again, these are the ones that we are not going to be using. So now I do have the new switch packs that we're using. And again, like I said, we do have to take them apart and install the new uh, circuit boards in them. The circuit boards are also color coded. So if you can see um, these switch packs, one connector is gray and one connector is black. So these new switch boards or circuit boards are actually color coded the same way. So you really can't mess them up. Once you have those screws out, this part right here just comes off and reveals the circuit board. So if I grab the right one here, we will see that this is the replacement circuit board, which does indeed look a lot more simplistic than the other one. Uh, I guess we are not using the functions though. So this will be replacing that guy right there. This does just lift out, make sure that no parts are coming with it. And we are going to take this blue piece off and transfer it to the new one. So this is the old one, looks extremely sophisticated and a lot of stuff that I really don't know about. So I'm just going to set this aside. Then I am going to put this silicone sleeve into the holes and that is ready to set back in there now. And due to the knobs on the bottom of this, um, it will actually fall into place exactly where it needs to go. So that is good to go and we can put this cover back on. Uh, there is a little alignment pin right here, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. There is not a whole lot of pressure or snapping or anything needed. So these silver screws just go back into place now. And now we are good to go. So there is our new switch pack. Make sure all the buttons feel okay. That alignment dowel is lined up right there. And that alignment dowel is lined up right there. So beyond that, that is how you swap the circuit boards over. And now we are just going to do it to this one. All right. Now we have our two switch packs with the circuit boards all replaced. These are what those look like. And again, they are color coded, pretty, pretty hard to mess up, but it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So now we are going to take this trim piece and put these back into it. All right, so just double checking, we have the three silver Phillips that are tight and on. We do have the four T8 Torx that are on on both sides, and the buttons on the steering wheel are now good to go. All right, so now we do need to swap over the harnesses on the actual steering wheel itself. So this is the harness that came with the factory steering wheel and the switch packs that came in it and all that good stuff. So we unplugged all these when we took the cover off with the switch packs that came with it. So we're just going to go ahead and pull these guys out of here. And there is two 
push tabs that I honestly don't care if I break because they are not going to be reused. So there's one. And there is two. So there is the factory harness that we are no longer going to be using. You can tell because it does have this green connector as well as all of the colored wires. So this gets set aside with the other switch packs that we're not using. And this is our new harness that's going in. They are all white wires. And there is a couple less plugs. So they are color coded for the gray and black switch packs so you know which way to route it. And then this is the plug that goes down in the center. So pretty straightforward. We will just go ahead and route this. So as you can see, the wires are tucked in that little groove right there and right there. So everything else is going to get plugged in. Make sure this has enough uh, wiggle room to be able to plug into the clock spring. This one we can go ahead and plug in, or I guess both of the um, paddle shifter wires we can plug in. Again, black on this side, gray on this side. All right, now we can go ahead and set the switch pack assembly and put it back on here. All right, so I went ahead and made a slight modification. As you can see, there is no connector for the heated steering wheel anymore. Those are soldered under there, and I have simply run a wire out this crack by this uh, pedal shifter. So um, that will be for future projects, but as of right now, that is just tucked away in the factory location. Um, this green plug will not be used, so we can bring in the switch panel. So now we just simply, this red and green plug that are still right here and here, the red is your horn, um, those go on these little L bracket things right there. So. You can go ahead and plug in the switch packs. It is tight, so keep that in mind. All right, I did go ahead and move the camera so that it wasn't shaking so much while I was doing this. So we can just go ahead and plug these in now. Again, it is pretty tight in there, so it might actually be easier to go ahead and, can I still get to that? Yeah, I can. Just go ahead and make sure all your wires are out of the way and clip this guy, or not clip, but push it down in, seat it so all of the switches are in correctly, center, okay, that's all in, again, this guy. Goes on the back side of that tab. So go ahead and tuck that wire out of the way and slide that connector. There we go, the green one is on the mount and the red one is on the mount. So I don't know, if, yeah, there we go. Right there and right there. So now that these are sat down, we have a little bit more room in here to reach down and 
hopefully plug in the switch packs. There we go. That guy's in. Alright. Both of those are plugged in. I'm going to tuck these wires out of the way. Pull this harness tight again. And there we go. Our steering wheel is complete. Alright, so up next we actually have to take apart part of the center console. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult for me because I do have these Molly panels installed there and there. But for you it should just be simply taking it apart. Uh, the best way to do this, put the key in the ignition, turn it to uh, the run position. You don't have to start, obviously don't start the truck. Um, with it in run position and your foot on the brake, you can actually move this into the drive position. And then once that is done, you simply just grab here and pull up and both sides and this whole section will actually just lift up. On the Raptor models, you do have to unplug the uh, switch panel right there. And then once that is out of the way, you can lift, again, this is gonna be back, you can lift this up and out of the way, and that is where we're gonna have to get to our connector to make the paddle shifters work. All right, you'll have to excuse the bad light, but uh, here is how this works. So, sorry for the dinging of the truck being on, put on the brake, put it in drive sure the truck doesn't go anywhere. You can see this is loose already. This simply pulls up. And you just kind of have to slide it out of there. Separate from the cup holders. All right, so this guy comes off first. Otherwise, you cannot. Well, I don't know, you might be able to, but it wasn't happy about it. So now that that is out of there, this simply comes up. We can go ahead and disconnect the Raptor switch panel. And now we are basically free. So I'm just gonna set that there because I still have something connected. But if you can see, get these out of the way, right there. That is what we need to plug that splitter harness into. This right here is the splitter harness. And as you can see, there is a good bit of wire, which I personally did uh, tape the end of them together. So these are pins or uh, pins to go in the connector behind the steering wheel. So I really don't wanna mess those up. Once you uh, get this installed down here, um, you just have to route these up, which there is a hole right down there. Uh, if you can see where my finger's pointing and that will put it behind the dash kind of towards the floor and then you just pick it up down there and route it back here all the way up to the bottom of the steering wheel. There's really only room for a couple fingers down there. That is what she said. All right, so if you can see that, that is the connector that we need to install this into. So, they only go in one way. Satisfying click. There we go, all right. So, that is back in place, and now we simply have this group of, this group of wires.
boom we are done in here so there this is all completely assembled again and now we can move to the steering wheel there is three bolts um, it is a five and a half um, it's a little guy so we can pull these out all right so now that that is off we can get these guys apart which isn't horrible just pop it off like that it's hung up on the key a little, or where the key goes. And there are these little, I'll show you right here. There are these little hooks right here. So that's what holds the top to the bottom and the back. The top stays on, the bottom can come off. Let me pick you up here. All right. Now that we got Line the hell out of you. Here we go. It's this connector right there. Right. Once that is done, we are going to take those wires up through the dash, up to here, and uh, then we are going to put them in specific pins that are empty right there. All right, so basically what I did was I had this panel uh, loose right here. So I just ran it up to the top of the panel, put the panel back on, and you can actually see right here where they go from behind it up. And basically I just routed them straight up here. Um, I am going to zip tie them to this existing wiring harness so that way if there is a little because there's going to be some access there's uh, probably a foot of additional that just needs to simply go up here so I'm going to go ahead and pin them first and then pull them tight under the dash so that way there's no wires hanging and we will zip tie the access to that harness right there. All right, sometimes with Fords, uh, they do weird things when you start unplugging things. So probably should have been the first step, but uh, let's go ahead and undo the battery. All right, now that the truck is not yelling at me anymore because this is unplugged, we have no power to the truck and I have the instructions pulled up, which there are instructions, but only for this part, which is why I'm making this video. So, if you look at where the wires go in, you can see that it is the top row, and then it says pin three is the red wire, pin four is the white wire, and pin five is the black wire. So there's little color-coordinated dots, for the most part, uh, that go in there. So you just count, there's a, there's a one right there, so that is pin one, two, three, four, and five. So it looks like that normally. And then you just simply do that there, that there. And now this guy is loose. Um, you can move it with your fingers. So now once that is done, we can do this by hand and we do not actually even need. Um, so as you can see right there, uh, it is in white goes to pin four, and that is pin four. So if you listen, you can hear a little click right there, and that is the actual pin locking into the connector itself. So this is the last one. Red goes into three. So those are all in. You can give them a gentle little tug individually. Make sure they're not coming out. Go ahead and push this closed again. Lock that back into place. And then you can go ahead and 
end the wires nicely and plug this guy back into place back here. Get a pair of flush cuts, keep them professional. Don't snip the wire. And boom, now you're all set. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a um, smaller metal rod of some sort, and you're gonna find three holes. So there's one right here, one right there, and one straight up through the bottom. What you're gonna do is you're just going to press this in, and then you just saw the airbag pop out. And from what I found, you honestly have to Get the bottom one. There we go. And then go over to this guy. All right. And there you go. Now your airbag's out. Go ahead and squeeze the sides of the connectors. And then pull the ground off. Now your airbags free and clear. All right, so the stock bolt is a T50 Torx. So I just grabbed an extension and this longer ratchet. And let's see if we can't get this guy broken loose. It actually came loose a lot easier than I expected it to. So in theory, while still holding the clock spring, now our steering wheel's free. All right, so now we can go ahead and remove this clock spring as well. And the nice part about getting all of that other stuff done before is now we can simply just start installing everything. So, yep, it is a T10. And it looks like there are one, two, three, three screws. So that one plug right there, they are coarse thread, so they come out pretty quickly. It's got a connector on the other side, so I'll just give it a nice gentle pull. So line up those two holes all right so what I ended up doing was uh, I took the old clock spring and actually very carefully until I accidentally dropped the old clock spring uh, which thank God is the old one uh, took this black piece off and then on the new clock spring because I did try and shave these down and it just wasn't working out the steering angle sensor just simply would not sit flush uh, with this so on the new clock spring I very 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 carefully took this ring off and put the one from the 2014 clock spring on it so hopefully that all works out I'm not entirely sure to be honest but Let's go ahead and try throwing her all back together here. Okay, that is plugged in. Let's see the goddamn thing. Now that I have the lock removed, 
um, I am going to go ahead and throw the wheel on. So you just line up these two yellow pieces with the two holes, obviously, and then move that out of the way a little bit, and the airbag plugs go in as well. Be very careful not to um, tug on. And there we go. Go ahead and thread on the new nut, which is a 24 millimeter. Go ahead and plug in the new harness. Satisfying. All right, so apparently the torque spec for this is 35 or 34 foot-pounds. Um, I'm sure I'm already there with just tightening it with the ratchet, but we'll give it a... Oh, yeah. All right, so as for the airbag, you got three different connectors you need to put in right here. You've got the two airbag connectors, and then you have the horn that goes in that red connector up there. So I'm going to do my best here. Blue to blue, yellow to yellow, obviously, and then red to the horn. There's that. Yo, all right, steering wheel is done. Let's go ahead and throw the battery on really quick to make sure that all of the functions are working and everything is plugged in correctly. Again, we do have this wire coming out, but that will be handled at a different time. Grab the key. Airbag didn't go off, so that's a good start. Radio works, mode works. Again, mute does nothing. Voice command Please say works. A command. Uh, oh. No, don't. Don't do that. So everything is pretty, pretty much the same. The, obviously the, um, Adaptive cruise buttons do not work the same. Um, or they don't work at all. So those are just duds. Those are empty. Um, on off cruise works exactly the same. Resume cancel works exactly the same. Set works exactly the same. Um, D pad works exactly the same. Volume up and down, track left and right obviously works the same. Go ahead and get rid of that. Um, basically, these two buttons do nothing on, on this steering wheel. So you got your voice command and your phone button, um, which I could never figure out on the old steering wheel, to be honest. I know it answers the calls, but it doesn't end them. So, um, yeah, but steering wheel is complete, and we have a Gen 2 steering wheel on our Gen 1 Raptor. All right, so moment of truth. Let's go ahead and see how everything looks. The lights don't really match anymore, but I can live with that. All right, truck starts up, no check engine lights. That's a plus. We already tested the uh, functions of all of the buttons. Those all work. But the one thing we did not do is test the, it's telling me that because my door is open. Okay, so if I, use the buttons on the select shift right here, I can 
those still work. Now if I go into manual, it says manual one, manual two, manual three, won't let me go any higher because I'm not moving, but they work. It's fucking awesome. That is awesome. We now have a 2014 Ford Raptor with a Gen 2 steering wheel. All right guys, well that about wraps it up for this install video of the Gen 2 Raptor steering wheel upgrade kit. Like I said, I made this video because I found a bunch of videos on actually uh, just normal F-150s of the same year and generation upgrading to a Raptor steering wheel which isn't quite in depth as swapping a Gen 2 steering wheel over to a Gen 1. Obviously there was a lot of parts that had to be changed and everything like that. It really wasn't that bad. I genuinely think that anybody with a general set of tools could do this. It was a little tedious and especially figuring everything out like with the pins and um, how to get panels apart and stuff like that but it really wasn't that bad. You know, this is like $1,100 for a steering wheel upgrade uh, on, a, on a truck. And without a video kind of pointing out exactly what to do, how to do it, how to get panels off, where the screws are, how many screws there are, it can be intimidating. And I don't want that to, you know, make somebody not necessarily do this because this is a fantastic upgrade in my opinion. Um, like I said, I, I genuinely can't stand the factory steering wheel on the Gen 1 Raptor. Uh, it's one of the only huge downsides to the truck. Everything else inside is, is very comfortable, luxurious. I mean, as luxurious as you can be in 2014. However, the steering wheel sucks. So I am very, very glad that I did this upgrade. Anybody else that's interested in doing this upgrade, I will put links in the description below. Follow the page, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. There will be more content on this truck. This truck is about to go through a ton of upgrades and I am building literally the ultimate Ford Raptor overland build. So not many people do overlanding with Ford Raptors, obviously. I am, I absolutely love this truck. This truck is my baby. I'm not getting rid of it anytime soon. Right now the truck still has the iCamper setup on it, the iCamper SkyCamp Mini 3.0, as well as the Waterport Weekender, which is an eight gallon tank. It has a OBS 270 awning, and then a couple roto packs, and then some max tracks on the side. But the bed is still basically for, you know, storage and transportation. So yeah, the, this truck is going to turn into the ultimate overlander in the next couple months with that being said go ahead hit the subscribe button and like the video and i will see you guys next time thank you for watching and uh i'll see you soon